bioorganic weapons are a global threat. Start working with the rest of the world. Iraqi city, Iraqi city, Iraqi city. We have to come to my desire to reveal the truth. It might create more problems than solve. It's time to take responsibility. We want to have any chance. I've always valued your friendship, Leon. Stay right where you are. Mr. President! Kennedy. How do you know my name? Yes. Hunnigan. Thank God you're both all right. How do you two know each other? That's Helena Harper. She's been with the Secret Service since last year. I can't tell you how good it is to hear you two are all right. Look, I hate to rush introductions, but I need a report on your situation. Just shot the president. What he had already been infected by the time we found him. Leon. Leon did what he had to. He saved my life. God help us. All right. I'll submit the report. You two just focus on getting the hell out of there. The virus has already spread three miles past the campus perimeter and it's not slowing down. You need to hurry. Not before we check out Talok's cathedral. Agent Kennedy's got a lead that might tell us who's responsible for this. Leon, is that true? Yeah. I think I might have something. Roger that. I'll map out the safest access route. Keep your radio on. I got a lead? You will if you come with me. Adam, I'm sorry. So what's so special about this church? You have some sins to confess? It's hard to explain. If I don't tell you at the cathedral, you may not believe me. All right, welcome to Resident Evil 6. This is the first chapter in Leon's campaign. You're gonna tell me everything once we get to the cathedral. Deal? Deal. So we've now been introduced to Leon's partner throughout this game, Helena Harper. She is voiced by Laura Bailey. And in terms of Resident Evil characters, I'd have to say I actually really like Helena. So in this first part, we're kind of forced to walk. Leon can't really do anything. You can't do any basic actions. You can just, you can walk and you can look at funny pictures of old men. Leon's campaign is the weakest out of the four. Well, okay, it's the second weakest out of the four, but out of the three main ones, it's the weakest. This first chapter is definitely the worst part of the game, so once we're done with this first chapter, I'd say it, it definitely picks up. And at first when I played this game, I had a very negative reaction to it, just because I really hated this 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 chapter it's really boring and it goes on for far too long but pretty much after we're done with this first chapter and the first set of videos it's gonna be smooth sailing from here on out Roger. you see one of them aim for the head it's your best bet got it this is where the reception was gonna be They'd all be here eating dinner right now if... 
You think Beautiful. anyone survived? Beautiful. I hope so. Good work. Beautiful. Thanks for that. Good work. So the first part of this chapter I actually really like. Good work. And here I'm showing off the uh, kind of partner system where you can thank and give commands to your partners. It's it looks funnier than it's actually like helpful. Get back here. Roger. But this first part I actually really like. It is actually somewhat spooky and I, it's got good atmosphere and the music that's playing right now is really really quite good. So this part is really quite cool. I can't believe this is happening again. It's just like Raccoon. The Raccoon City incident. They were one of the survivors. Yeah. I'll never forget it. We're going to this cathedral of yours. But if you really did have a hand in this, you can kiss your freedom goodbye. I know. What was that? Only one way to find out. Let's go. So in this game, the characters control a lot differently than they ever have before. They, they control like they have a lot of weight to them, which I like in video games. I always like when characters have weight to them because it looks like, you know, it feels like you're actually controlling a person instead of just someone who's floating along on the, on the map. And now we can run a little bit faster. I'm just exploring. There's, it's usually a good idea to explore in this game. You'll, you'll find some good stuff. Speaking of collecting things, I will be going for collecting all of the collectibles in this game. And pretty much what those are are serpent emblems. Which unlock different files and action figures in the gallery, so... I think it's a good idea to collect them. And I'll just show it off, because it might as well. Fog. It came out of nowhere. Liz! Wait, let me go! It's too dangerous. My daughter, she's all alone. If we don't do something... All right, I get it. But if you don't keep it down, you won't live to save her. You understand? Liz. Is that your daughter? All right, let's find her. Leon, we don't have time We're to- We're making the time. So this guy is Robert. He works for the university right. we're in. And he's looking for his daughter, so we might as well help him. The first collectible is in this room. Just gotta find it. It's in this closet right over here. Best way to get them is to just shoot them. You do have a knife in this game, but it's usually better to just shoot them. And I am playing this kind of new game plus where I retain all of my weapons. I will show still where you're supposed to pick up the weapons, but for the most part I'm just going to use everything. And another addition of this game is Leon can dual wield pistols, which is really quite cool. And I usually dual wield Leon's pistols. I... It, there's no r real point in just using the one. If you have two, might as well use use two of them. And for whatever reason in this area, Leon reacts to the lightning like he's getting hurt. It's a little weird, not gonna lie. The thing that I appreciate the most about this game is how they really tried to make this as cinematic as possible. You know, there's minimal HUD, so you really get immersed in it. You know, it... It's not your typical Resident Evil game where you're going around collecting things and solving arbitrary puzzles. You're you're pretty much always moving forward. There's always something happening. Characters are usually always talking. There's usually stuff to collect. We need to find her. And there there's a lot of action. 
there's never really a dull moment. It's more of the frantic kind of horror from Resident Evil 4 and 5 where the enemies are pretty much everywhere and yeah, so I I do like this game overall. I think you know, most Resident Evil fans are kind of a little whiny about it cuz you know, I've been a Resident Evil fan for quite a while and I have no problem adapting to the changes of the series because it happened fairly progressively like you know they started off more horror and then around the time of Code Veronica they started to get more action oriented and then it would progress from game to game Resident Evil 4 was a lot of action but still horror Resident Evil 5 was a little bit of horror and a lot of action and then this game is a little little bit of horror and a lot of action so I think it progressed fairly well and that was me demonstrating Leon's amazing melee moves. You all right? You're gonna see me using melee ninety percent of this Logan game, especially when we get to the third campaign. I just want to find my daughter. I know she's here, somewhere. Also, the first thing that I noticed that I loved about this game was Leon's amazing jacket. Uh, I love this jacket so much that I actually bought my own version of the jacket. Well, it is, it's a replica of Leon's jacket from this game, and I love it, and I wear it all the time, and it's the most comfortable jacket ever. So nice and leathery. We'll need to get the elevator working again. It's locked, but I work here. I've got the keys. Once we're in, we can take my car. Thanks. Now let's find Liz and get the hell out of here. Liz? This guy sounds Liz, borderline Barry Burtony. Liz, Liz, is that you? I hope this isn't Liz's blood. Uh, another eerie touch that's going on right now in the sound design is there is just a phantom piano playing. You can hear it in the background. There really shouldn't be anyone right now playing a piano, and that's pretty creepy, and it goes back to the classic Resident Evil games. And this guy, we can't really get past him, and he's moving so horrendously slowly. This part will be over soon, thankfully. Over here. The red hand, the the bloody handprint on the door means we're progressing in the right direction. There's going to be a really stupid jump scare up here. Oh no! A girl! I've never seen a girl before. Liz! Dad? Where are Mom and Liam? They... they already got out. They're waiting for us at home. Come on, Leon. Play us a tune. Beautiful. Mozart would be proud. Those are the hugest donuts I've ever seen. How do we get out of this place? The underground parking lot. The elevator is up ahead. Hopefully it still works. Alright, you know what? At this point, I'm convinced Barry Burton changed his name to Robert and started working at a university. This guy sounds exactly like Barry. The underground parking lot. You just gotta go underground and to help my daughter. By the way, please don't shoot her again. Let's get this out of our way. Elena. Roger. In this part, you actually have to pass in front of Robert. Which is good because he just goes so slow and no, Robert, don't go in front of us. Beautiful. <laughs> Leon, you're so creepy. Stop looking at women and calling them beautiful. 